This past week of sales that we're gonna talk about in this video was so much better than the week that I had before, and it really is so much in part thanks to you guys. So first and foremost, thank you. Won't nobody love you the way they should Won't nobody check up on you, make sure you're good Won't nobody check those body cameras by your neck All they really Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park and I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Kitizen. I also do some direct sales. I also dabbled in Facebook Marketplace a couple of weeks ago. And in this week, we're going to be talking about everything that I sold on those different platforms that I just mentioned in the past week. If you are someone who has watched some of my videos before, you may be asking yourself, where is she filming right now? And actually, this feels very nostalgic because I am in my guest room and that's where I tended to uh, film a lot of my older videos. And so I'm back in here right now, mainly because the playroom where I typically film is super messy and I don't feel like cleaning it right now. And um, as some of you may know from watching my video last week, my parents were supposed to come and be with us for Christmas. We decided that they shouldn't. And although it really kind of stinks, uh, the silver lining, I guess, is that I could film in the guest room with my wall of shoes. <laughs> These are those like USPS shoe boxes. And I've basically just made like a huge wall of them. It goes like not all the way up to the ceiling, but it goes up pretty high and it goes basically all the way down. And as you can see, most of the boxes are filled with shoes. You see some like tap shoes here and just some other stuff. So that's what I have going on behind me. This is real reseller life, right? So um, I guess it's, you know, the silver lining is I can film in here. My parents don't have to look at this first thing when they wake up. Maybe I can sell through some of these before the next time they come to visit for real. And really we're here to talk about what sold last week and if you watched my What Sold video last week, I will link that right here if you didn't. I just was not in like the best place mentally and emotionally. Um, I think everything that had happened in 2020 was just catching up to me. I was also exhausted from different things happening at work. And so for me, I really needed to just take a break. Like I just took a break from listing. I took a break from doing a lot of the different things that I was doing. I kind of focused on my family. I focused on this big project at school. We did like a virtual choir concert. And so I had to edit together all of those videos that my students sent me. So there was a lot of stuff going on. I took a break. I fully expected that to have a huge impact on my sales and they did not. So I was really surprised to see that. I think I'll probably see the slowdown in the current week that we're in right now. I feel like I've already kind of experienced it. So I was really thankful because I had a great sales week and partly that was due to you guys. Like I had some really great viewer sales. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for that. And finally, thank you so much, most importantly, for just the kind and uplifting and encouraging words you guys left in the comments in that last video. I can't tell you how much it meant to me. Um, you know, it was in the comment sections, it was people reaching out to me on Instagram and just checking up on me. And I know there's no point in like trying to measure, you know, people's level of suffering. And if we were, I know that like, I'm way down here. I know there are so many people in the world who have gone through a lot this year, you know, whether it's losing family members to COVID, whether it's losing their jobs, just a lot of different things. I know that like what I'm going through with my parents not being able to come and you know, whatever else, I know like it doesn't even begin to skim the surface of what some other people have had to go through. Like I said, we're not here to compare, but um, I just wanted to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for just being so amazing. And um, like I said, reaching out and checking in on me. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Um, I'm in a much better place now. You know, my family and I are at peace with the decision that we had to make. And uh, we're just ready to kind of hunker down and do Christmas on our own with my brother's family. They're basically the only other family that we see at this point. And so it'll be okay. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday season as well. Whether you celebrate Christmas or maybe Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, or maybe you don't really celebrate a holiday at this time, but I just hope that you have a really good end of 2020 with hopefully, you know, at least a few loved ones. And yeah, so we just gotta make the best of it. Hoping 2021 is better. Also, I just wanna say thank you too because I haven't been going to my um, PO box very often just because the post office is crazy right now, but I did go because Nanette, a viewer, reached out and let me know that she sent me a care package or just like a box of goodies for my kids, and did she ever? So I went to my P.O. box, I got the box, she sent me a bunch of stuff like outerwear and you know different fun things for my kids, which was so sweet. And then I also had some cards, like some holiday cards from different viewers. You guys, again, like you are the best. So. 
thank you so much. I can't tell you how much it made my day. Um, and there are some other just wonderful and amazing things that viewers did throughout the week, just, you know, making purchases and things like that. So I will shout those out when I get there. So we're going to start off by talking about December 14th, which was a Monday. And I had one Poshmark sale. It was this pair of Born Bulena, I don't know, that was a style name, brown leather wedges in a size seven. The wedge was very colorful, kind of like striped or like it had like a variety of different colors on it. These sold for $30. That was because of an offer that I sent out to Likers. And so I made a profit of $21.88 on those. I don't know like where or when I got those. I've had those for a while. And in fact, I did relist those and they sold 87 days after I relisted them. I don't think that I got them at the consignment store in that big bulk buy where I was shopping by myself and you know, like my cost of goods was like under a dollar. I think I got them before. Part of me thinks I got them at the bins, but I don't really remember exactly where I got those. I apologize. Um, and I know that those were listed for 87 days after being relisted because I use this app called Seller Insight. I love it. It just shows you a lot of cool data that Poshmark doesn't really make available to us. And it makes relisting really easy on Poshmark. So um, that is a tool that I've been using. That's how I know exactly how many days things have been listed or if they've been relisted, all that good stuff. Just wanted to throw that little plug in there because I love the app so much. Moving on to e eBay. I had some really great sales at the beginning of the week on eBay and then you'll notice it kind of slowed down later. So the first thing that sold was this pair of Eileen Fisher black pull-on pants in a size medium petite. They sold for my full asking price of $39.99. That was with free shipping. I had to pay $4.25 to ship those out so I made a profit of $31.74. I got those at a local consignment store not too long ago and I probably paid like four or five bucks for them. Those did sell before on eBay and the person wanted to return them because she was like, I didn't know that these were like very tapered. And I was like, I mean, like I showed pictures, like, I mean, that's exactly what they look like in the pictures. I don't know. So she returned them because she didn't really like how they looked and thought that they were going to be something very different. Um, that's okay because the second time they sold for more and they sold very quickly after I relisted them. So I was super happy about that. It was a great flip, great sale. I am trying different things on eBay. I know I've talked about this in previous videos, but I am trying to turn off best offer on some pieces. I'm trying free shipping on some pieces. We're just trying all the things. And I have made some decent sales from, you know, the no best offer thing. So we'll see, like I'm just kind of playing around with it and We'll see what happens. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep telling you, you know, how it works for me in these what sold videos. Definitely make sure that if you're not subscribed yet, that you subscribe and that you hit that bell notification so that as I continue to make these what sold videos and as I continue to experiment with eBay, you can stay up to date with what's working for me and what isn't. The next thing that sold over on eBay was this Anthropology HD in Paris high neck sleeveless jumpsuit in a size medium. This also sold for my full asking price of $39.99. And I did have shipping on this as well. This weighed over a pound. So I did have to put it in a padded flat rate envelope. And because I'm like top rated or whatever the status thing is on eBay, um, the padded flat rate envelope for me cost $7 and 91 cents. And so I made a profit of $28 and eight cents after paying for shipping. I did purchase that off of Poshmark actually sometime during quarantine. And so I saw that someone was running a really great sale. I got a bunch of stuff. I got some stuff for myself, but I also got some stuff to sell on Poshmark. I probably had like eight to $10 into that, but I was really happy about, you know, that flip. I did purchase that knowing that it did not have the belt that was supposed to come with it. So obviously I made sure to disclose that. And, um, you know, I like took pictures of the belt loop without the belt. I like wrote that there was no belt um, and it's still sold. So don't be scared of selling things with flaws. You just wanna make sure that you take pictures of them and that you disclose them very clearly. The next thing to sell on eBay was another full price sale because I didn't have best offer on and I had free shipping on it. And it was this pair of Revolution black slip on tap shoes for men in a size nine and a half. At this consignment store that I talked about earlier in the video where I was allowed to shop by myself in their storage unit, um, I found so many pairs of dance shoes like tap and jazz and all different kinds of dance shoes. 
and I just threw them all in the bag because I knew I was going to be paying so little. These were actually in like maybe my fifth or sixth trip to this consignment store. And so that trip, my average cost of goods came out to under a dollar. So all of these dance shoes that I'm going to talk about, because I think I sold like three pairs this week, they all cost under a dollar. These, like I said, sold for $27.99 with free shipping. They did weigh over a pound, so I did have to pay $7.91 to ship them out in a padded flat rate envelope, but I still made a $17 profit, and they were also promoted at 1%. So with my cost of goods factored in, I still made like $16 off of those. And the craziest thing is that they were only listed for like a week. I was kind of dreading listing all of these shoes, and I definitely like put them off until the end of all of the listing that I've been doing with all that stuff from that consignment store. I mean, I still have a ton of stuff to list, but those were kind of in like the last bag of shoes. I should have just listed them. I mean, people apparently are looking for this kind of stuff because I've been steadily selling through the dance shoes. I think I picked up like 10 to 15 pairs. And yeah, this week alone, I sold three. I think last week I sold one pair. So if you see dance shoes or if your kids took dance and have old dance shoes lying around, definitely list them because they can sell within that like 15 to... $28, $30 range. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari and it was this new with tags, Disney Winnie the Pooh one piece like sleepwear thing, just like a, yeah, one piece. I think it, I don't remember if it snapped up or zipped up. It was for babies. I don't remember exactly the size, maybe like nine months or something. I don't know, but it sold for $16 on Mercari with free shipping, which cost me $3.56 to ship out. So I made a profit of $10.08. I did pick that up at the same consignment store. I had less than a dollar into it. So it's like a $9 profit, which I'm cool with. And it was really cute. You know, Disney stuff does well. Winnie the Pooh stuff does well. It's a classic. So I was happy to pick it up and move it. And then the last thing to sell was over on Kitizen. Um, you know, I kind of went through like a month long dry spell with Kitizen. And then last week I finally had a pretty good sale. And then I had a few sales this week. So hopefully Kitizen continues to stay somewhat consistent for me. But I sold this Janie and Jack red plaid button up uh, short sleeve shirt. It was in a size 2T. It was perfect for the holidays, which is why I listed it. I pulled out a bunch of stuff that I realized were like kind of Christmassy or yeah, just very like appropriate for the holidays and got those listed really fast. I think this was the only thing that sold from that, you know, little lot that I pulled, but that's okay. It sold for my full asking price of $15.95 and I did have to pay for shipping, which was $3.85. So in the end, I made a profit of $10.15, which again, I got it from the consignment store. So I had less than a dollar into it. And that was a great flip in my opinion. And then on Tuesday, the 15th, I had one Poshmark sale again. It was this pair of American Eagle relaxed straight leg jeans in a size 30 by 36. This was kind of a funny sale because I got like a lower offer, maybe like a $15 offer on these. And so I told the lady, hey, if you can come up to this certain amount, um, I can sell them to you for that and I'll ship them out tomorrow. And I think she kind of alluded to the fact that like she could get these online, which I don't think she could get these same exact ones because they're like an older style. But um, she's like, I can get these online and I'm really not looking to spend more than $20. And I was like, okay, well, you know, good luck <laughs> finding them at your price point and I hope you find them. And then I was sending out offers to likers one day because I think someone else had liked these too. So I was sending out offers to likers um, with $25 as the price and with discounted shipping. So she reached out to me and was like, can you ship these out tomorrow? They're going to be a Christmas gift and I just want to make sure that they get here in time for Christmas. This is when I thought that I was immune to all of the shipping delays. Like for some reason, I was still having a lot of packages, you know, making their way to their recipients in a very timely and if anything, like fast manner. Like I was getting a lot of love notes and feedback and messages from people being like, this got here so fast. Thank you so much. And I was like, my post office is amazing. Like everything is getting there in time. And then like probably the day after this sold, I was getting all of those shipping notifications from Poshmark saying, hey, like this item might get there kind of late. And then I was going through all of the things that I had sold recently on Poshmark and realizing, holy cow, there are things that shipped out like at the end of November that are still not at their destination. And that's when I realized, I'm not immune to all these shipping delays. Um, USPS is trying their best, but there are some things apparently sitting at the bottom of a bin somewhere and not getting where it's supposed to get. So I started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, like this is not gonna get there in time for Christmas. But thankfully, like four days after I shipped it, um, they sent me a love note and they were like, thank you so much, it got here in time. And I was like, 
well, praise the good Lord, because I was really scared that they weren't going to. And they were like, me too. Like we know USPS has been kind of crazy. So some things have been getting to their places in a timely manner. Some have not. It is frustrating. I get it. But also like, it's not, you know, these individual poster workers or USPS's fault. Like it is what it is. It's an unprecedented year for the amount of packages being shipped out and all that kind of stuff during this time. So for me personally, I'm just trying to show them grace. I've been really lucky because I haven't had eBay people like reaching out and trying to cancel stuff. Probably now I will. Now that I like put that out there, now I'm going to have all of these people opening cases and stuff. But Thankfully, so far, I haven't had any eBay buyers reach out and try to cancel things. And so um, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I was happy that that made it there in time. I hope you guys haven't been experiencing too many shipping situations. If you have, let me know in the comments down below. I'm almost scared to read the horror stories, but I know that they're out there and I am feeling with and for you because I know that some of my packages are delayed as well. I just, I'm not hearing about them from the buyers. So thank you buyers for being amazing, I guess is the moral of that story. Okay, moving on to eBay. I had again, just a great sales day over on eBay. Um, I accredit all of that to List Perfectly. You guys know I am a huge List Perfectly fan and it's exactly for instances like last week. At the beginning of the week, Poshmark was super slow and I was really thankful to have these eBay sales. And then at the end of the week, it kind of flipped where like Poshmark was doing really well and eBay became really slow so that's why I like to have a lot of different platforms that I sell on and I don't want to rely too much on just one platform because that can kind of kick you in the butt sometimes when that platform just isn't performing for you so um, if you want to try out this perfectly if you if you've been meaning to diversify the platforms that you sell on I have a link down below in the description my coupon code is Becky Park if you want to try it out and get 30% off of your first month I use it literally on the daily it is amazing so the first thing that sold on eBay was this pair of Carlos by Carlos Santana black Cassie Cassie was the style name vegan leather boots they had buckles all over them they were knee high they were in a size 7 they sold for my full asking price of $49.99 I don't even think I had best offer turned off on this I think I had it turned on because I also did charge for shipping and so when all was said and done I made $42.31 off of these I did not source these myself um, I have a friend at church who gives me so much stuff and during quarantine she came over with like boxes and boxes and bags and bags of stuff for me she's the one that gave me like boxes of crocs because her whole family went through a phase where they wore crocs and also she gave me tons of boots and to be honest with you carlos by carlos santana or like the carlos santana shoes in general i have passed over them so many times at the thrift store just kind of thinking like they weren't really desirable they weren't really a brand that people were looking for but they sold for $49.99. And in fact, most of the boots of hers that I listed are just not things that I probably would have picked up if I had seen them in the store, but a lot of them have sold and they've sold for good money. Like I sold a pair of her Merrill boots not too long ago. Merrill I generally would pick up, but they were a style that I was kind of like, mm, really? <laughs> but again, like they sold, they sold for good money. These sold for great money. And I'm just so thankful for her donations because had it not been for her just giving these to me for free, um, I would have never, you know, pushed myself or challenged myself to list these kinds of boots. And I would have never known that they could sell for 50 bucks. So, you know, definitely put yourself out there. Try things that maybe you typically you know, haven't tried before that maybe aren't your style. You just never know. There really is a buyer out there for everything. The next thing to sell was this pair of Zenergy by Chico's black ankle pants. They were just very casual, like cropped pants, kind of perfect for like lounging around in at home. Um, they were in a Chico size three. Chico's uses vanity sizing. So if you convert that to just kind of like regular women sizing, it's a size extra large. I sent out offers to watchers on those for $21.90 with free shipping. And so I I ended up making $15.28 on those. And I was super surprised that they sold as quickly as they did. I think I only had them listed for like a few days. Those I did pick up at the consignment store for under a dollar. So it was a pretty good flip in my opinion. The next thing to sell also came from my friend. They were this pair of Bear Traps Rayleigh Brown Vegan Leather Heeled Boots in a size seven. They sold for $25 and they paid for shipping as well. Um, I did have those promoted at 1%. I made $23 and 28 cents of pure profit because again, those were something that I got for free, which was 
awesome. And then I had a couple direct sales. These direct sales were just so amazing and they were a result of people watching haul videos or just different videos that I did on my channel. So the first sale was to Marissa. Marissa, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Marissa is also a teacher, although she teaches kindergarten and I teach high school choir. So it's very different, but she got this pair of Zara knee high boots. They were basically like those Stuart Weitzman dupes for like those black suede boots that come up over your knees. I desperately want a pair of those, but also like, where am I gonna wear those, right? Like, I don't know. But anyway, um, she saw me pull these out of a thread up rescue box. I got a shoe rescue box. It was like 15 pairs of shoes for 90 bucks. And this was one of the pairs of shoes that came out of that box. Um, I sold them to her for $35 shipped. It cost me $9.11 to ship out to her. So after shipping, I made $25.89 off of those. Marissa, you are awesome. Seriously, I hope you love them. And I hope that you had a really great end of your semester with your kiddos. And then the next viewer sale went out to Amanda. And Amanda watched my Plato's Closet video. And I'll link that video right here and in that video I basically shared like my experience with what kinds of items I was taking to Play-Dohs and I showed everything that I was going to take and then I also showed what they ended up accepting and what they ended up rejecting. This shirt that she bought from me it was this t-shirt with like a whale embroidered on the front pocket and it had these little like polka dots on the back. Um, they ended up actually rejecting the shirt. I don't know why. I thought it was so cute and so did Amanda. So she got it from me for $10 shipped. It cost $3.56 to ship out. So I made a profit of $6.44 off of that because I got it for free from my brother. So Amanda, I hope you love that shirt. It is so cute and I know you're going to totally rock it. Or if you're giving it to someone, I hope whoever you're giving it to enjoys it, but I hope you love the shirt. And then the next day was Wednesday the 16th. This is when I started seeing a little bit of a pickup in my Poshmark sales. I only had one transaction, but it was a four piece bundle and they were all men's pieces. The first thing was this Columbia microfiber fleece line jacket in a size large. This was listed for 43 days before it sold. And this I do believe I got at the consignment store for under a dollar. I was pretty excited about it, but you know, the comps for it weren't actually that amazing. I think they were kind of in that like 25 to like $35 range. So I believe I had that listed at $35. The next thing to sell also came from the consignment store. So I had less than a dollar into it. And it was a super dry, the long beach classic Jersey polo shirt in a size large that was listed for 62 days. The next thing to sell was actually something that I got in a men's thread up rescue box. I do love the men's ones because I've gotten three and they've all been really good like lots of new with tag stuff just a lot of profit made off of all of them and i'll actually link down below a playlist of all of my thread up box unboxings um, in case you want to see what kind of stuff i get in those thread up boxes i get some really great boxes and i also get some really stinky ones <laughs> i'll also link down below in case you're enjoying this video my what sold playlist i have been on youtube now for like almost two years and i think every single week I have done a what's old video. So if you feel like you learn a lot from these kinds of videos regarding what types of brands to be on the lookout for, um, or just, you know, what kinds of things are selling, I'll throw that video down below so you can see more videos just like this. And if you are enjoying this video, definitely make sure that you hit that like button. But going back to this bundle sale, um, the item that I had pulled out of that thread of rescue box was this Marmot drop line black soft shell full zip jacket in a size medium. Marmot can be a really great brand. Um, they have a lot of great outerwear pieces. However, I do believe that they are um, a brand that's sold at Costco now as well. So you just have to kind of be careful because sometimes that means they have some, you know, less expensive pieces out there on the market. But this was in a size medium and it was listed for 85 days. And I, I think it like the comps for this were around like 30 to $40. So I think I had it listed at 40. And then the last thing to sell was in my four for $25 sale. And it was this ocean and earth surfing graphic t-shirt in a size medium. That one I got for free from my brother as well. And that was listed for 122 days after being relisted. So that whole bundle actually sold because the guy had liked two items, I believe. And um, I saw that he liked them. So I threw them in a bundle and I sent him an offer and I sent him a really generous offer. And he was like, well, geez, like I can't pass that up. And he was like, well, hold on, let me look through your closet. Cause I think maybe there is more stuff that I want. So he ended up adding two more things. And then he sent me an offer of $65 on everything. It was a little bit on the lower end of what I would have liked to move those four pieces for. Really, 
I was thinking about just those three pieces because at that point I was just ready to give that Ocean and Earth t-shirt away. But um, I went ahead and accepted it because I had been having such a slow week on Poshmark. And so I ended up making $52 on that bundle. And at the end of the day, I was really happy with that because um, a lot of those pieces I got for really cheap, you know, like less than a dollar. And the thread up piece, I probably ended up paying like I don't know, like maybe six to $8 for. And then on eBay, I had a couple sales. The first thing to sell was this pair of White House Black Market suede teal loafer heels in a size nine. This I sent out offers to watchers on for $29.90 with free shipping. It did weigh over a pound, so I did have to pay $7.91 to ship those out. So I made $19 on those. Those I got at the consignment store for under a dollar. I sent them in to thread up and they were accepted by thread up, but they just did not sell in the time allotted. So they got sent back to me when I reclaimed them and they actually sold very quickly after I listed them. So there you go. The next thing to sell was this newest tags, UGG pink suede small purse. I didn't really know UGG made bags and stuff, but I got this at the consignment store as well for under a dollar. They were new. And they even had like the dust bag and stuff, but they did have some flaws like on both sides on the exterior. So on one side, there was what seemed like glue or something. I don't know. There was like some substance that I could not get off. And on the other side, there was like a scratch in the suede. So I just took pictures of those flaws. I disclosed them and I listed it for like $50. I got this half off offer, but I just went ahead and accepted it because it wasn't really getting that much attention, maybe because of the flaws, I don't know. So it sold for $25, um, they paid $5 for shipping. It was promoted at 1%. I ended up making $22 and 48 cents on that. That had actually sold the week before. It just kind of took them a while to pay. And then I had two more direct sales this week because you guys are amazing. Thank you. Thank you for being awesome. And I never expect people to buy stuff from my closet. And in fact, like when I know that there are people in my closet who are viewers, I try to send like the best offers that I can. But seriously, you guys have outdone yourselves and you are amazing. So the first thing to sell to a viewer on Wednesday went out to Angelica and it was this pair of new with tags, Pistola jeans. Pistola is a brand sold on Revolve and Angelica actually let me know that Pistola means like small gun or small pistol in Spanish. So that was kind of cool to learn a little bit about, you know, the Spanish language. And it was this pair of boyfriend jeans. They were distressed and I had gotten them at Play-Doh's. So in that Play-Doh's video that I just talked about earlier, I took a bunch of stuff to Play-Doh's and using the $90 that I made from whatever I was able to sell, I did some sourcing. And this is one of the things that I sourced at Play-Doh's for $18. So I sold them to Angelica for $55 shipped. They cost $7.85 to ship out because I shipped them out in a flat rate envelope. And so I made $47.15 off of those. Angelica, I hope you love them. I hope they are everything you thought they would be. And thank you so much. The next thing to sell to a viewer also came from that thread up shoe rescue box haul that I did. And I will link that video right here. And what I sold was this pair of naturalizer brown leather boots and they sold to Michelle. So Michelle, thank you so much. They were really nice. Um, they were knee high. There were like a couple scratches in them, which we discussed came from another pair of shoes that were in that box, but I sold them to Michelle for $40 ship. I paid for shipping, which was $9.47 because they were like big tall boots. And then I ended up making $30.53 off of those. So Michelle, thank you so much. You are awesome. And I hope you love the boots. I'm also a little distracted because as I'm filming on my phone, I see someone is like making a bundle and I'm just like watching the progress of it. Like, are you going to buy it or do I need to send you an offer? Like, I don't know what's going on. Okay, and then moving on to Thursday the 17th, this is when Poshmark hit an all-time low for me in that I had zero sales, and it was not my only $0 sales day on Poshmark. But on eBay, I continued to have some sales. The first one was this J. Crew wool jeweled embellished Fair Isle sweater in a size extra small. This I got at the consignment store for under a dollar. It was beautiful. I loved this sweater. I had it listed at like 50 and I continued to send out offers to people at like the $40 mark. And then I started sending out like $35 offers, but I finally had someone accept one of my offers and it was actually an offer to watcher on eBay. I sent out offers to watchers for $39 and 90 cents. So basically $40 they accepted, they paid $5 for shipping. It actually cost $5 and 65 cents to ship out. So I made $34 and 76 cents. And I have had that listed for a few months, but I was just happy that it finally sold. And I hope whoever has it loves it as 
as much as I would have loved it because it was beautiful. The next thing to sell was this Soma black built-in bra sleeveless dress in a size medium. This was a funky dress. Like I still remember trying to haul it and I just could not figure out how the straps worked, but it sold for $19.90 via offers to watchers. They paid $6 for shipping. It cost $5.79 to ship out. And so I made $17.52. I got that at a local consignment store and I think I paid $3 for it. They were doing like a tag sale. So I paid three bucks for that one. So, you know, so profit of about like $14 on that one. And then I had two kiddos in sales. What? What in the what? So the first thing was actually a women's piece. If you didn't know, on Kittizen, you can sell both women's and children's pieces. And if you want to try out Kittizen, I will have a link down below that you can use to sign up for it. I think you get like $5 of credit if you use my link and I get $5 of credit. It's been a minute since I've sold a women's piece, but it was this loft green wool blend turtleneck sweater tunic thing in a size extra small. It was really nice. Like it was a really beautiful sweater, but I've had this listed forever, like forever, ever. And so I was like kind of surprised that it moved when it did, because I feel like on Kittizen, typically you have more luck selling things that you have just listed. Like I feel like it's pretty rare that I sell something on Kittizen that's been listed for a while. And this has been listed for a while. Not only has it been listed for a while, but like I literally went through this process a while ago where I relisted every single thing in my Poshmark closet and cross-listed all of those items over to the different platforms that I sell on. I will link that video right here, but this was one of those, you know, items that I had relisted on Poshmark, cross-listed to a bunch of other places, and then it randomly sold. Someone put it in their cart. I think I had it listed for like $28 on Kittizen, and so I sent them an offer of $22 with free shipping. They accepted. Um, shipping was $8.15 because it did weigh over a pound, and you can do padded flat rate shipping on Kittizen. It's just going to cost you $8.15. So I made a profit of $11.69. I do believe I got that at a Goodwill or something a long time ago. So I probably have like five or six bucks into this, but I don't even remember at this point because I've had this for so long. So I was just so happy to get rid of it. The next thing to sell was this pair of Play Mimo Double Velcro Strap Water Shoes. I got these at a Goodwill maybe like a couple months ago and they sold for $19. I did pay for shipping, which was $3.85. I made a profit of $12.83 on that after, you know, kid is in fees and all that. I think I spent like $3 on them. So I probably made like a profit of $9. So not like the best flip, but also not my worst. And then on ThreadUp, I had a great sale. I had two ThreadUp sales this week and this was a White House Black Market jacket. I don't even think that it was like a leather jacket or anything. It was just some sort of like moto jacket type thing, but it was in a size 14. And if you've been watching my videos, you know that typically I tend to sell uh, plus size pieces much better on ThreadUp than anything else. So I think it helped that it was a larger size. It sold on ThreadUp for $84.99 and my payout was $48.60. So that was really great. I just took off my sweater because one, I just realized that I wore it in a previous video that I did like three weeks. Not that I care because people rewear clothes. And so like, why can't we rewear clothes in videos? But two, I'm like sweating. So I took it off and we're going to keep going. So on Friday, the 18th, this was a day that Poshmark was like, I'm so sorry that we didn't give you any sales yesterday. Let us make it up to you today. And then they took another break on the next day because on Saturday I had no sales again on Poshmark, but I had some really great sales on Friday. I think it's because it was closet clear out and I was using my closet clear out method hardcore and it was working. So let's talk about it. The first thing to sell was this loft marled knit open front cardigan in a size large. It was listed for 61 days. I got it at the consignment store for under a dollar. It sold for 18 dollars using my closet clear out method. I think I had it listed at like 25, but I sent an offer of 18. And so I made a profit of $14 and 40 cents. I had some like decent luck with loft this week. It seems like the next thing to sell was this crag hoppers maroon fleece quarter zip pullover in a size double XL. This sold for $20 using my closet clear out method. And so I made $16 and that took 60 days to sell. I got that for under a dollar at Plato's Closet when they were doing their 90% off clearance sale. Um, it was like 
the last time that I went to the sale and it was very slim pickings. It was mainly just men's pieces. And this brand, Crag Hoppers, it's an outdoor brand, kind of along the lines of like Columbia. Um, I don't think it's really at the same tier as like the North Face or anything. It's not as well known. And I really thought that it would sell on eBay. The reason it didn't is because I never cross listed it to eBay and Mercari the way that I thought I did. I went to delete it from Mercari and eBay after it sold on Poshmark and it wasn't there. And I was like, well, great. Like that's why it took a little bit longer to sell, I think. And that's why I didn't sell over on any other platform. I'm glad that someone still found it on Poshmark and bought it from me. But um, sometimes that happens. I'm not as organized as I would like to be. And so some things that I think I've cross-listed, I haven't and all that kind of stuff. The next thing to sell was actually a bundle with two pieces. And it was because they had liked both of these pieces and I put them in a bundle for them and then sent them an offer with discounted shipping and they accepted. Both of them were in my four for $25 sale because they've had these pieces either forever or I just didn't feel like they would sell very well on their own. Um, I do have a four for $25 sale to try and encourage people to bundle. I don't have as many pieces in that sale anymore, which is why I haven't like sold very many straight up bundles in that four for $25 sale the way that I used to. I need to kind of go through my closet and put some more items in that sale. But, um, you know, it kind of is just a reminder to me too, when I see people like those items or bundle them them that I just need to like move them quickly so I send really great offers on those pieces but the first item was this pair of Avia exercise pants they had ankle zips and they were in a size small they took 73 days to sell I don't know where Avia is sold but I know it's not like a very high-end athletic wear brand you see it a lot at thrift stores and stuff but these were actually pretty nice. They were given to me for free from um, that same friend who gave me a ton of, you know, those boots and stuff. And so I went ahead and listed them. I probably had them listed at like $15 or something. And then the next thing to sell was, again, in my four for $25 sale, it was this Zenergy by Chico's floral zip up jacket in a size extra small. This is, I think, one of my oldest listings, like from the OG days of when I first started thrifting with reselling in mind. And I could not be more happy that this is out of my life. I do believe I tried sending this into thread up. They did not take it. There was, if I remember correctly, like a small stain near the zipper on the front. And I'm one of those people, like if I have paid money for an item, if it has made its way into my house because I forked over, you know, money, I will not like donate it. Unless I get it home and I'm like, oh, there's like a huge hole that I didn't notice or one of the sleeves is missing. Or, you know what I mean? Like if it's like a huge thing and there's just no way that I'm going to be able to sell it, then I will go ahead and redonate it or get rid of it. But if it's something that like it's sellable and I just haven't managed to do it yet, like I will hold on to that piece forever. Like all that stuff that I took to Play-Dohs a couple weeks ago, that's not stuff that I purchased at like a Goodwill or something. That's not stuff that I thrifted. That's all stuff that I got for free from friends. So that kind of stuff, like I'm willing to donate or I'm willing to, you know, send to Play-Dohs or something. But if I bought it with my own hard earned money, I am going to sell it. So this finally sold. It has been relisted a bunch of times and didn't thread up. Like I said, it sold finally after being relisted after I got it back from thread up. It took 106 days to sell. And these two items I put in a bundle. I sent an offer of $15 with discounted shipping and that made my profit $9.88. The buyer received the items, loved the items. I'm so happy that they're gone and I'm so happy she likes them. The next thing to sell was another pair of dance shoes. And these were new without the box. Um, um, these Capizio, which is like a really popular dancewear brand. They sell like shoes and leotards and all that kind of stuff. But they were these black leather jazz dance shoes in a size 7 medium. They only took nine days to sell. And they sold for $17 using my closet clear out method. And so I made $13.60 on those shoes. And I had less than a buck into them. The last thing to sell on Poshmark this day was a pair of Big Star Maddie Mid-Rise bootcut jeans in a size 33R, so a little bit bigger of a size. They took two weeks to sell and they sold for $30 using my closet clear out method, which gave me a profit of $24. I got those at the consignment store as well 
for under a dollar, which was really exciting. These were kind of sitting in like the bottom of a bag of stuff that I had gotten from that consignment store when I went and did all that bulk purchasing from them. And I was really excited when I pulled them out because I knew that it was probably, you know, a sale that was going to be over $25. If you are interested in learning a little bit more about my closet clear out method, which, you know, just was really lucrative for me last week, this week, not so much, but last week, I have a video about it and I will link that right here and I'll kind of outline for you how I do that. It's my favorite way to go about closet clear out. I know a lot of people have said they've tried it and it doesn't work for them and it's not going to work for everyone. But for whatever reason, I find a lot of success with it. And um, again, if you want to hear about it, you can check out that video. And then on Saturday the 19th, I had no Poshmark sales, just two eBay sales. The first thing to sell was this American Eagle Soft and Sexy Ombre shirt. It was actually a really cool shirt. Um, American Eagle Soft and Sexy. I think a lot of people are looking for it. I don't think it sells for much, but I had it listed on eBay for $19.99. That's what it sold for and it even had $5 shipping on there. It actually only cost $3.48 to ship out. So I made $19.01 off of that. And I got it at the consignment store for under a dollar. So that was really exciting. I did not expect that to sell on eBay. I thought for sure it would sell on Mercari, but you never know. And that's why you put everything everywhere. The next thing to sell was another pair of dance shoes by Capizio. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I also don't care. It was this pair of Teletone black leather tap shoes in a size seven and a half. They sold via offers to watchers for $19.90. That was with free shipping and they did have to go in a padded flat rate envelope, which cost $7.91. So I made $9.80 off of those and they were promoted at 1% as well. So definitely not like the best flip when it came to um, dance shoes this week, but but also I had less than a dollar into them. So that's still pretty great to me. And then on Sunday, the 20th, I ended the week on a bang, like it was a good Sunday. And it's mainly because of a viewer named Karen. Karen, you already know what's coming up. You are amazing. Thank you so much. So Sunday was also a closet clear out day. I think basically from here on out, you can assume that Sunday on Poshmark is a closet clear out day. And so I'm trying to remember exactly how this went down. I think she had liked a couple items and I just, you know, put them in a bundle for her and I sent her an offer. And that's when she let me know in the bundle, um, you know, just using the comments that she was a viewer and she was like, um, thank you so much for your video last week. And just for opening up about how you were having a hard week. Um, and she was was like, you know, I'm actually not done looking through your closet. So let me keep looking. And I was like, okay, when you're done and you have everything that you want in a bundle, let me know so I can send you a really good offer. And I was, I was going to send her an amazing offer. And what she did instead was she put more stuff in her bundle and then she just bought the bundle outright. Oh, right, right, right. I don't even have like an automatic bundle discount on bundles. I used to, I don't even do that anymore. And she just bought the bundle outright. And I was like so mad at her because I was like, let me send you the offer. But also I was so thankful and touched that she did that. So let me go through all the stuff that she bought. Mm, thank you. You're amazing. So the first thing that sold was this cloth and stone gray front tie chambray shirt in a size medium. This took 61 days to sell. And this I actually got in that same Poshmark purchase where I got the Anthropology HD in Paris jumpsuit. I probably had again like six to eight dollars into this, maybe like ten dollars into this. Um, I don't find cloth and stone like ever and I know that a lot of people say you shouldn't pick it up anymore because it doesn't have like the greatest resale value but I had purchased another cloth and stone shirt from that same person and that one sold within like a week for like thirty dollars or something. So don't listen to everything that every reseller says. Even me, like everything that I say, take it with a grain of salt because something that works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. Let me be allowed to get excited about finding cloth and stone. Like what is not going to kill anyone. So that was um, the first thing to sell in the bundle. The second thing to sell was this pair of Under Armour black heat gear compression pull on pants in a size medium. They had like a really cool pink panel on top and I got them for less than a dollar at the consignment store. Those took 39 days to sell. The next thing to sell was this Free People Wool and Angora Blend Open Front Cardigan. It was blue with like stripes and it had these big buttons on the front. That took 51 days to sell and that was after it went to thread up didn't sell over on Thread Up and came back to me. So uh, when it came back to me, I listed it and it sold to Karen. The next thing to sell was this pair of Jed North blue seamless high rise leggings in a size medium slash large. 
Jed North is an athletic wear line. I don't know very much about it. I just found it at that consignment store. It, um, so I have less than a dollar into it and they felt like really good quality. And when I looked up comps, they were pretty good. So um, again, I still don't actually know that much about it, but um, I think it's definitely a brand worth looking into if you find it out in the wild. The next thing to sell um, was another brand that I just don't know very much about. The brand is Chiara Mente, I'm probably saying it wrong. I think it's Italian. And it was this alpaca blend cardigan sweater in a size medium. That took 63 days to sell. I also got that at the consignment store for under a dollar. And it was kind of like a waterfall front, open front. I thought it was beautiful. And funnily enough, like it had a lot of interest on Kitizen. Like on Kitizen, people kept putting it in their cart and no one actually, you know, bit the bullet and actually purchased it. But I'm glad that this finally sold to Karen because it really was such a beautiful piece. And then the last item to sell was this Under Armour Pink Storm Loose Hoodie in a size medium. And that took 25 days to sell. Funny story about that. I was buying something on Mercari. Someone had like a lot of um, two pairs of pants or something. I was looking for stuff for my daughter and um, the lady let me know, hey, I have a lot of other stuff in this size if you're looking for more stuff. And if you let me know what you want, I can just make you a bundle and I'll you know, give you a great offer. And I like have never really had that experience on Mercari where people have been that proactive, but I was like, okay. So I looked through her closet and I let her know what I was interested in. She sent me a great price and I bought all of it. And I bought this sweater or this hoodie thinking that it was in a size medium kids for some reason, even though now that I look back, like it didn't say kids anywhere, but I was buying it for my daughter and it was in fact a women's medium. So I had no use for it. I went ahead and just listed it and it sold to Karen. So I was happy about that. The items came out to $197. She did not give me the opportunity to send her an offer. So I made $157.60 off of those items. Karen, seriously, thank you so much. I hope you love everything. I hope everything fits you the way that you want it to. And I want you to know that you absolutely made my week. That was awesome. Thank you so much. The next thing to sell was this pair of Teva or Teva. I don't know how you say it, but it was this pair of rubber outsole athletic toggle lace up shoes in a size nine. Those took forever to sell. And I was so surprised because I know that this is a pretty good brand, but I think they're definitely much more popular for their, um, their sandals, like their super strappy sandals. I don't think that maybe people are looking for like their sneakers as much, I guess. They were relisted and on top of that, they took 94 days to sell after being relisted, but they did finally sell using my closet clear out method for $28. So my profit was $22.40. I do believe I got those at a Goodwill, probably paid like six bucks for those. And those sold to someone who is going to play pickleball in them, which I love. Like I love knowing why people are purchasing things. Like some, some things are obvious, right? Like you're buying a t-shirt, you're just going to wear it. But like to know specifically that these are going to be worn to play pickleball, how fun. I love when people share those details with me, whether it's like in the bundle feature or in their um, love notes and stuff. I love it. The next thing to sell, I was pretty surprised by. It was this pair of Nike shocks. Um, they were brown and they were like leather running shoes in a size nine. They only took 10 days to sell. I got them at the consignment store and I just kind of immediately regretted getting them because I just did not think that they were very cute. Um, and so I put off listing them for as long as possible. And then I got to that last bag of shoes from the consignment store and I was like, I guess I'll just list them. I was kind of surprised when I looked up comps because comps were pretty good for um, like the style of shoe from Nike, like the shocks. I didn't see very many in this colorway. And so I think I had them listed for 40, but it was closet clear out. I let the person who liked them know that I could drop the price to $28. I just wanted them gone. Cause again, I just didn't find them very cute. And um, she accepted. And so I made $22 and 40 cents on those very quickly. So there is a buyer for every thing. You just never know. And then the next thing to sell was this Columbia Field Gear Interchange Jacket in a size extra large. This took 44 days to sell. It did come to me in a men's thread up rescue box and it sold for $50 using my closet clear out method. And so I made $40 on that. The last thing to sell on Poshmark was this M.M. Lafleur St. Ambrose black jardigan, which is like a word that they made up to describe a cardigan that is like a jacket, like a blazer, like a jacket, like a blazer jacket. Why? I can't talk. Anyway, it was in a size large. I had it listed for 94 days. And I think that that was 94 days after I had relisted it. 
It sold for $50. I made $40 off of that. I purchased it at a local consignment store when they were doing like a 70% off sale. So I think I had like $12 into this, which for me is a lot. I don't spend that much usually on inventory. I like to get things for under a dollar, but I spent like $12 on this because MM Lafleur is a great brand. Um, I had it listed for $125. 125? Yeah, I had it listed for $125. Someone sent me an offer for 50. I checked comps again. I realized very quickly that I had it priced really, really high. Like $125 was really high. 50 was definitely on the lower end of comps. Like people had sold this exact thing for $50. People had actually even sold it for less, but people had also sold it for like $60, $70. So I countered with 75. She countered back with 50 again. So I made a bundle, put this item in the bundle and I messaged her and I said, hey, can we please meet in the middle at $60? I will send this out to you tomorrow. It's an amazing piece. How do you feel about that? She ghosted me. So when 22 hours had passed, I just went ahead and accepted her $50 offer because, you know, it was still a great profit margin for me. And I had had it for a while. And I don't know that people are necessarily wanting to drop that kind of money on a piece like this. It's definitely more of like a career piece. Lots of people are no longer working in the same way that they were. A lot of people are not going into work. And so when you get to work from home, you don't need fancy schmancy jardigans from M.M. Lafleur as much as, you know, when the world was normal. So um, I just went ahead and sold it for way less than 50% of my asking price because I'm allowed to. It's my business. <laughs> and I just wanted to move it. It's a beautiful piece. It deserves to be worn, not just hanging in my closet. So I went ahead and let it go. Maybe you wouldn't have done that and you would have had the strength to hold out, but I did not want to wait around for the right buyer. This was the right buyer for me. The last thing to sell was over on ThreadUp and it was this pair of Anne Klein ankle boots. I got them for free from that same friend who gave me a bunch of other boots. They sold for $34.99 and my payout was $6.30, which was not amazing, but that's okay because it was free. So that's pure profit. So here is how my week broke down. On Poshmark, I sold 21 items and that was for a total profit in my pocket of $452.04. That came out to an average sales price for me of $21.52, which for me is pretty high because, you know, sometimes I'll sell things for like $8. Like I don't really care, but um, that was a pretty good ASP for me. And then over on Mercari, I had the one sale for a profit of $10.08. On eBay, I sold 12 items for a total of $280.56. My ASP was even higher over there. It was $23.38, which is for me, really, really great. On Kitizen, I sold three items for a total of $34.67. On ThreadUp, I sold two items for a total of $54.90. And then I had four direct sales, which is so much for me. Like I usually don't sell very many things based off of like hauls and stuff like that. So it was very surprising. And I had like higher price sales, which is really great. So I made $110.01 off of direct sales. And so my total came out to 43 items sold for a total profit. This is my net sales, not gross. I've already accounted for shipping. I've already accounted for platform selling fees. I made $942.26. I was beyond shooketh. Apparently, the secret to making sales is to like stop listing. <laughs> I'm lying, don't do that, don't do that. But I was really thankful that I listened to my body and my brain that was saying like, you need to slow down. And I'm thankful that I did. And I still had some really great sales. And I think it's because I had been so consistent in the months leading up to, you know, taking a few days off. I had consistently listed and cross listed for, you know, so many days. And I think that's what allowed me to really kind of, you know, take some time off and not see a huge dip in sales. If anything, the lesson you should learn from that is be consistent when you can so that you can take time off the way that I did. And like I said, I today was the first day that I started listing again after like basically a week hiatus. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to see that in this week's sales. And that's okay too. I feel much more refreshed and excited about listing again because I took that break. Just to kind of give you a little bit more information about the week and about different things that 
that I do like to keep track of. Um, this week I had seven sales as a result of closet clear out. So again, for me, I have a very specific way that I like to do it and it resulted in seven sales last week. I also like to tell you about that consignment store where I did some bulk shopping. Um, I like to let you know how many items I have sold from that place and how much I've earned. So this week, 21 of the sales out of the 43, so basically half, came from that consignment store and I made $398.36 this week alone off of that one consignment store. But in total, I have now sold 405 items from that consignment store, all stuff that I picked up at the like beginning of the summer, and I have made $4,584.15 off of that consignment store. You do need to subtract the $1,400 um, that I paid to purchase those items, but I have still made some really good money off of them, and that doesn't even include the amount of money that I've earned from Thread Up because I've sent a lot of items to Thread Up from that consignment store. So for the week, let's see, I sold 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 32 women's pieces. I sold nine men's pieces and three kids' pieces. Last week, it was a lot more even. It was like basically neck and neck between like women's, men's, and kids. This week, it was a landslide, like just women's pieces were flying out the door, whereas men's and kids' pieces are just kind of chilling in my closet. So that's how my week went. It was, like I said, just a spectacular week, and it really is because of you guys. Not just because I had like a really randomly large number of viewers making sales for me, whether it was, you know, shopping my Poshmark closet or even making direct sales from, you know, haul videos and whatnot. But really, thanks to you guys for just being so wonderful. I'm just so thankful for all of you who were just so kind and encouraging and let me know that I was allowed to feel the way that I was feeling. You know what I mean? Um, so thank you for that. If you are in a place of just not feeling very well, I want you to know that I am here for you. If you need a place to vent, um, you can vent in the comments. You can DM me on Instagram. Um, I know sometimes we just need that permission to feel the way that we're feeling. And I want you to know you have it. You have it from me. Um, it's okay to feel miserable, you know, even in the midst of the holidays, sometimes the holidays makes it worse. So from me to you, I do hope that you do have a wonderful holiday season. Um, I think I'll be putting this up on Christmas Eve. So happy Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas. And I hope that the end of the year treats you well. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you more than you will ever know. And that's it. Bye.